part five of this video series on motion control, I will show the steps for programming the C-Trio High Speed Counter Interface module. This will include setting all of the parameters, creating motion pulse profiles, updating the firmware, monitoring the inputs and outputs, and testing the profiles. There's a lot of ground to cover, so let's get started. There are several tasks that we can perform when using the C-Trio Workbench Utility. I will touch upon all of the features which will make this part of the video series a little long, so I will try and cover it quickly. If you miss anything, use the PowerPoint PDF file handout I spoke of earlier and either use it to follow along with the video or use it later if there are areas you need to brush up on. I start the DirectSoft 5 DS Launch application. From here I open the Workbench support version titled CTRIO WB2 DirectLogic PLC under the Utilities menu. Please note that there are additional support versions of the CTRIO Workbench that can be used with WinPLCs running the Think and Do software or an Ethernet Base Controller, abbreviated EBC, an interface device that can be used for a remote I.O. I can also use the offline support version that allows me to create a complete CTRIO configuration file, extension type CWB, that can be read into a CTRIO module at a later time. Once I have the CTRIO Workbench dialog window open, the select link box will prompt me to establish a link to any found CTRIO modules. Other devices that are supported by the Workbench application will also appear. In my case, I will select the DL05 Motion Control with Micro PLC for my link. I had created this link for the DL05 at an earlier time. It may take a few seconds after the link is established before the known parameters and information is displayed in the CTRIO Workbench dialog window. As shown next, the COM status should indicate OK and the config status most likely will display same as module that is, if this is the first time use of the CTRIO module. If there are other CTRIO modules installed in the PLC, they will be displayed in the Installed Modules window. For my application, I'll make sure the CTRIO module I am using is the one highlighted. Please note that most likely the CTRIO Workbench dialog window will indicate the module mode is in Program Mode, which is where I want to start. It is good practice to take a look at the module status so that you are familiar with the scan time. Also check which OS version is running for your module. In my example, I have OS version 2.1.22 being used. I will cover updating the firmware version of the CTRIO module a little later in this video. It is a good idea to provide a name and description of the CTRIO module that can be used later to identify the module. This becomes important if there are multiple modules in an application. Under the heading Current Module, I select the Edit button to allow me to type in the name and description of my module. In my case, I named the module Motion Demo and gave a description of Single Axis Linear Lead Screw Slide with DL05, CTRIO, and Seymour Micro. I click OK to accept the edit. Next, I determine how I will use the CTRIO module in my application so that I can configure the module's inputs and outputs. Of course, I will be using the module to output step pulses in a directional signal to my stepper motor drive. I next click the Configure I.O. button at the middle left of the CTRIO Workbench dialog window as shown here. The Configure I.O. window shows the various functions that can be selected for the H0-CTRIO modules for inputs and two outputs. Let me point out that the various functions within each input and output function box can change based on the selections made in some of the other function boxes. For my application, I select the Pulse Step Direction function listed in the Output 0 function box. Output function box 1 will now show slave to 0 as shown here. Output 0 designated as Y0 on the CTRIO module and not the same as Y0 on the DL05 PLC will provide the step pulses, 
while output 1, designated as Y1, also not the same as Y1 on the DL05 PLC, will provide the stepper drive's direction signal. I will be using the homing profile in my demo, so I will set input C as the limit out zero function, which will allow me to use it to indicate when the linear slide is at the home proximity sensor. I'll cover more on this when I create the pulse profiles. Configuring the I.O. at this point allows me to see how the input and output addresses are assigned when I map the I.O. in the next step. Next, I'll set up the PLC's memory addresses that are used to communicate with the CTRIO module. I click the I.O. map button at the bottom of the CTRIO workbench dialog window as shown here. In the I.O. map dialog window, I have two choices under the map display mode for how the addressing can be used within the PLC. The addresses can be broken down into either two ranges or four ranges. Using two ranges allows addressing the I.O. in Word and Bit of Word formats. Four ranges allow addressing in Word and Control Relay formats. In my example, I have chosen to use the two ranges for my input map and output map display modes. In the I.O. map dialog window, I check the Enable Write to PLC box and enter Memory Register V2400 for the starting V address for inputs. This produces a range of memory registers from V2400 to V2425. Next, I check the Enable Read from PLC box and enter Memory Register V2430 for the starting V address for outputs, which gives me a range of memory registers from V2430 to V2461. The available input, output, and system functions will now be shown under the respective tabs as we see here. A report that shows all of the mapped I.O. addresses and their functions can now be printed from this dialog window and used as a reference for developing the latter logic. As shown here under the Input Functions tab, there are no input assignments for the CTRIO to controller data or outputs for the controller to CTRIO data. Earlier in the Configure I.O. dialog window, I did assign Physical Input C as a Limit Out Zero to use for my homing profile that I will create in a moment. But it is an internal function and is not communicated between the CTRIO module and the DL05 programmable logic controller. The output functions that have been assigned as part of the selections I made are shown here. Most important are the Output Zero, Pulse, which provides the steps to my stepper drive by way of the connection terminal Y0, and Output One, Pulse, which provides the directional signal to my stepper drive by way of the connection terminal Y1. Under Input Data are the various bit signals that the CTRIO communicates to the controller, in my case, the DL05 PLC. Here are the output functions continued with the bit and word signals that the DL05 PLC will communicate to the CTRIO module. The system functions that have been assigned as a result of the selections I made can be seen here. I have used the bit signals in my ladder logic to indicate when channel 1 input terminal C designated as V2425.2 is true for my homing signal and I also use the output zero active bit designated as V2425.8 to indicate when a move is no longer active. As a time saver, I can export the assigned functions as a comma separated values file, file type CSV, from the IOMAP dialog window as I demonstrate here. Later, I can import this file into my DL05 PLC Ladder Logic program as a part of my element documentation, and the assigned function names can be used as nicknames. I can now create the various pulse profiles I will use for my demonstration slide. I click on the Pulse Profiles button at the bottom of the CTRIO Workbench dialog window to open the Pulse Profile tables. I next click Add to bring up the Edit Pulse Profile window. I will need four different profiles for my demonstration. I'll start with the Home Search Profile. This profile, when executed, will bring my axis to a known position based on the actuation of a fixed proximity sensor 
from a metal target that is located on the slide. I name my profile Home and select Home Search from the Profile Type list. The file number will default to 1, being the first profile added. I use the Home Search procedure that will run to limit 1 at frequency 1, then reverse by a count amount at frequency 2. I use 7500 Hz for the first frequency and 1000 Hz for the second frequency. I make the count equal to 2,000 steps, which will back the axes off of the proximity sensor by one revolution of the stepper motor, which is equivalent to 0.125 inches of travel. I assign limit 1 to channel 1C, terminal C being where the proximity sensor is connected, and I select the event to take place when the proximity sensor actuation changes to a high level. I then select OK to add the profile to my profile table. Next, I'll create my dynamic velocity profile that I will use for jogging my axis. I name it Dynamic VEL. The file number defaults to 2. Later, I will show how the numbers are used within the DirectSoft5's ladder logic iBox instruction to load the profile into the PLC CPU memory prior to executing the move profiles. The dynamic velocity profile will be used for jogging the slide axis both to the left and to the right. The profile will be executed for as long as either the jog left or jog right push button on the Seymour Micro graphic panel is pressed. I use 10,000 pulses per second per second for the Excel and Decel rates in both the clockwise and counterclockwise directions. I can adjust these values later to produce a slower or faster response during jogging if I desire. I click OK to add this profile to my table. I now will create two different predetermined move profiles. The first is a trapezoid profile and will be identified as file number 3. I can control how fast the stepper motor will accelerate up to a target speed and then decelerate back to a stop position. I'll use a set time of 1000 milliseconds to accelerate to my maximum target rate and also use 1000 milliseconds to decelerate to a stop. The target POS frequency is set for 20,000 Hz. I'll use a start and end frequency of 40 Hz. 20 Hz is the minimum that can be used. I use 160,000 steps for the total pulses with each step producing a distance of 0.0000625 inches, the final position will equal 10.00 inches of total linear travel. I have set the trapezoid profile to be slightly aggressive in accelerating to the target speed and decelerating to a stop so I can compare the response to the S-curve profile which I do next. I click OK and the trapezoid profile is added to my table. The second predetermined move profile is the S-curve profile. It will be identified as file number 4. Like the trapezoid profile, the total pulses is set to equal 160,000 steps, again representing 10 inches of total travel. I use a set time of 10,000 milliseconds to accelerate and decelerate and a maximum target POS frequency of 25,000 Hz. The start and end frequency is set to 20 Hz. I have left the default of 3% for the min frequency change and 10 milliseconds for the min entry time. Notice in the calculated results to the left of the plotted curve, the peak frequency does not reach the target of 25,000 Hz. The Excel and Decel times could be reduced to achieve reaching the target. The S-curve profile is ideal in applications where we do not want the load subjected to vibrations or jarring motions. Again, I click OK to add the new profile to my table. It is always a good idea to have the latest firmware loaded in the CTRIO module to take advantage of the latest enhancements and or possible bug fixes when you begin a project. While connected to the module with the CTRIO Workbench Utility, look at the module's OS version under Module Status. 
My example is currently showing OS version 2.1.13. To check the latest available firmware OS version, visit Automation Direct's firmware upgrade website page and click on the H0-CTRIO part number shown in the list. You will be taken to the Host Engineering's website, or you can also go directly to Host's website. The links are listed here for your convenience. Click on Firmware under Host Support category. If there is a later OS version, download it to your PC. Once this is done, click on the Update Firmware button located in the lower right corner of the Ctrio Workbench dialog window. Select the firmware CEB file type that was downloaded and click the Open button. My example shows updating from version 2.1.13 to version 2.1.22. In the Confirm Firmware Update pop-up box, check to make sure the new OS version is the latest and click OK. The update will take a few minutes. The CTRIO Workbench Utility has the ability to back up the setting, parameter, and profile configurations that have been created. To save my configuration, I can write the configuration to a CWB file format. Likewise, if I have a previous configuration saved CWB file, I can read the file into the CTRIO Workbench Utility and then write it to the CTRIO module as explained next. The CWB configuration file for the demonstration unit covered in this video series is available on the Learn site. It is titled Motion Control Demo hyphen CTRIO Workbench Project dot CWB and includes all of the settings, parameters, and motion profiles covered in this video tutorial. After my CTRIO Workbench configuration is complete and saved, I can then download the information into the CTRIO module by using the Write Module button under the Config Operations area located in the upper right corner of the CTRIO Workbench Utility. The module does need to be in the program mode. The download starts as soon as the button is clicked and takes a few seconds to complete. If I have a previous configuration saved in my CTRIO module, I can upload the CWB file from the module by clicking on the Read Module button, which is also located in the upper right corner of the CTRIO Workbench Utility. And then I can do a Write File to save the CWB configuration file for future use. I now have my CTRIO module fully configured and I am ready to test my settings, parameters, and move profiles. I click on the Go to Run button under the Utility Functions area on the right center of the CTRIO Workbench Utility. The Module Mode indicator will now display Run if the module has a valid configuration as seen here. Also note that the Monitor I.O. button located on the middle right side of the CTRIO Workbench Utility will now be available and I am ready to test my configuration. From the CTRIO Workbench Utility, I have the ability to monitor the module's I.O. I also can test the move profiles I created earlier. Before I start testing, let me point out that I for sure want to test my application under safe conditions. To prevent damage to my equipment or cause possible injury to myself or someone in the vicinity, I uncouple my stepper motor from the load, keeping in mind that unexpected results could occur. I do this before putting the CTRIO Workbench Utility into the Monitor I.O. mode. With the CTRIO module in Run mode, I click on the Monitor I.O. button located under the Utility Functions area of the CTRIO Workbench Utility. A pop-up warning will give me the choice to suspend reading output data from my DLO5 PLC controller, preventing interference with the monitor I.O.'s ability to control the CTRIO, so I select Yes. I can monitor the CTRIO's inputs and outputs at this point by looking at the I.O. Status Input Functions tab as seen here. I am using Channel 1, so Out 0 shows as Pulse Inactive while OUT1 shows a discrete ON condition at this time. OUT0 is my Y0 physical connection on the H0-CTRIO module that produces the step pulses 
and out one is my Y1 physical connection on the module that determines the stepper motor's direction. Again, please do not confuse Y0 and Y1 here with the DL05 PLC's output designations of the same name. I am using the C channel as my output limit zero, so I can test it by toggling the home proximity sensor on and off by placing a piece of metal in front of the sensor's target area as shown here. From the output functions tab shown here, I can test the various move profiles that I have created in the C-Trio Workbench utility. For example, I can execute the trapezoid pulse profile, which is file number 3, by first selecting 0x10 hyphen load table under the command pull down menu. I next enter 3 into the file number field. I click on the process command button, which turns on the command complete bit and then turn it off. The direction button is left as shown. I execute the move profile by clicking on the enable output button. The output enable and output active indicators are now shown as on. When the trapezoid profile is complete, the output active indicator will turn off. For future reference, if you look under the system functions tab as shown here, you'll see the ability to read from or write to the current input count and the current output pulse count. Be aware that the current input count can be read or written only if the input is configured for counter or quad counter operation. Timer values are not accessible. Also, the current output pulse count can be read or written only if the pulse output is running a dynamic velocity or dynamic positioning profile. The reading and writing to the CTRIO internal registers is accomplished using the Direct Logic Read from Intelligent Module, abbreviated RD, and Write to Intelligent Module, abbreviated WT, instructions, respectively. Okay, that wraps it up for the CTRIO workbench monitoring and testing of my configuration. I can now click the Done button. A pop-up message will remind me that the CTRIO module is no longer reading the PLC's output and ask me if it is OK to re-enable this function. I click Yes and return to the CTRIO Workbench's dialog window. My configuration is stored in the module, so I can now quit the CTRIO Workbench utility. Join me in Part 6 as I continue with the programming by creating my ladder logic within the DirectLogic 5 software and make use of iBox instructions.